Okay, so hello everyone and uh, welcome to this little meetup that we're, we're doing um, in these difficult times when it's hard to be self-employed or have your own business. So what I've decided to do is call on a couple of close friends that own their own business and they're also in the media light and see if we can give you a bit of positivity uh, going forward. And also, if you are struggling, how we can turn this round into being a bit more of a, a productive day for you, instead of just falling into that little trap of sitting at home and watching the TV and letting the world go by. That's probably the worst thing you can do. And I know it's a very easy thing to do. Uh, I've done it myself. So let's um, just share my screen so we can have a little look who we all are. Okay, so first up, this is myself, uh, Robert Pugh. I'm a, a wedding and portrait photographer, and I've had a, a business now for about 10 years as a limited business. I would say 15 years from being self-employed and turn it into a, a limited business. Before that, I was in the army, um, served in the army for uh, quite some time, and I was a, a sniper in there. Once I left, I just put my eye to the camera. Now, uh, handsome devil I am there with my uh, nice and edited picture. Uh, I'm a bit more rough and ready around the edges now. So who have I got with me today? So let's start with uh, Angela. So uh, I've got Angela's uh, website up there and there's a little bit about her. Uh, Angela Nicholson. Um, a quick overview, she's a journalist, a photographer, the founder of She Clicks, co-founder of Camera Jabber and Squeeze Media. Uh, Angela also tests and reviews camera and photographic uh, products as well. So if you head over to uh, Squeeze Media um, and have a little browse around, but mainly you would probably want to go to Camera Jabber. So this is where she puts everything to do with all her reviews and uh, all the testing she does as well. So her brand new site, um, it's an absolutely pleasure to have a browse around. So make sure you head over to that and have a look. Okay, and uh, next up, we've got um, Kate Teasdale Ward. Okay, <laughs> double barrel um, surname. Um, now, how to explain Kate? Well, I would say motivator, a confidence coach, and she also manages Teasdale and Ward, which is a media and news company. Uh, I hope I've got that um, right. So uh, head over to her website, have a little browse around there. She's uh, an awesome person, very lively as well and she knows how to party. So that will be my uh, cap on uh, Katie there. Um, so let me just close this screen back down so we can go back to myself. So we've got uh, our um, introductories over and done with. Now I'm going to just unmute Angela and I'm going to see if I can remember how to do this, put her on the spotlight. There she is. Hello. Uh, so, Angela, um, I've just done a, a, a brief, obviously, uh, recap about yourself. Um, is there anything you want to add to that? Have I covered everything, sort of? Uh, no, I think, I think you got it. I mean, I, I used to be, I started out as the editor, sorry, technical editor, amateur photographer, then I was at Future Publishing. And then in 2016, created Camera Jabber with two colleagues. And uh, that's where I've been focusing my attention really for the last, uh, well, over three years now. But we had a, a relaunch a little while ago, as you mentioned, and uh, the site looks, it's looking really nice. And we've got some interesting functionality. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, so I'm loving the uh, website. And it, I mean, it, it's fair to say that you, uh, you know your stuff around business and, um, you know, how to cope with a fill in a day-to-day -day working environment. Yes, as you can see, one of my strengths is not necessarily tidying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, I, I juggle quite a lot on a, a, a daily basis. And um, I have done for a long time, actually. I mean, when I was at Future Publishing, I was working on, I don't know, about six different titles 
uh, and, you know, a couple of websites and magazines and you're constantly juggling and, and keeping everybody happy and making the content fresh and, you know, constantly thinking on your feet, uh, getting cameras in, getting lenses in, you know, coordinating the kit and doing the review. So I'm probably quite a good juggler of tasks. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that's, uh, that's brilliant to put across. And uh, I can certainly see it's a little Aladdin's cave behind you there as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, we've, we're coming to talk about, obviously, you know, how we can help people out. And um, this, uh, this sort of troubling uh, time we're going through with the, the coronavirus, I know it's a, an awful thing to, to talk about, but I kind of want to talk about the, the positive things behind it as well. Everyone's talking about the negative things and how it's impacting them um, uh, and what they can do. Uh, so I, I've just got a, a handful of questions to uh, ask you and then maybe we could sort of go from there. I've sent the questions over to you. So I, my first would be, ha, um, so how have you seen the current situation affect your business? And what have you done to keep yourself positive and moving forward? Well, uh, the first thing I've noticed is uh, traffic to Camera Jabba has gone down significantly. And uh, obviously that has an impact. But, you know, we, we look at that. We know that we've got everything in place for Camera Jabba. You know, and we've got people who look at the SEO search engine optimization. So we know that's all OK. And we can attribute it to the fact that it, everybody is basically looking at the BBC. They're, yeah. you know, they're looking for news. So we can't really do a great deal about that. We can just make sure that the site is OK. Um, and we're looking at what content we can put out that people are, you know, keep people engaged, that people will be interested in. So. I think I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel like I've had enough news now. Yeah. Um, I've started to actively limit the amount of news I'm seeing or the particular times and try to turn it off and stay more positive. Um, and I think that there will come a time when a lot of people are turning towards their hobbies um, and they will want more input from, you know, sites like Camera Jabber because we have techniques, things like that. So we're thinking about that. We're looking forward. We're, 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 you know, remaining positive and sort of seeing it as this is out of our control. So there's no point in getting very, very stressed about it, but just focus on what we can do. And I say what we can do is, you know, I've got some great cameras in for testing at the moment. So I can take those out. So I can still go outside. I was at, uh, I was photographing uh, grassroots football on Saturday and rugby on Sunday, you know, so I can go out and test cameras and I can put pictures up and share those. Um, yeah. And I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a good point with what, um, what you were saying about limiting the amount of media that uh, you watch. Uh, I know I've done that myself. So I basically just look at the news first thing in the morning, just to get a recap of uh, if any changes. And then after that, I stay away from it because it, it can sort of pull you down, make you sort of a little bit down, keep reading the news. Um, and then I tend to focus on sort of productivity through the day, what makes me happy. Um, even if it's a case of like yourself, you know, taking the, the little dog out for a walk and, and doing some photos out there. I know we can't go into sort of public places and mixing the same to limit it as much as you can, but there's nothing to stop you taking the dog out, taking your camera out and yeah. doing some sort of hobby um, in that line. And the National Trust has opened up its grounds, you know, for free, wow. which is great. I'm a National Trust member and I couldn't be happier about that because, you know, I think that's National Trust getting back to its roots. You know, it was, yeah. it was about opening space for everybody. So, you know, that's a fantastic opportunity to help people get out. You can't go into the properties um, or into the cafes, but you can go, you know, into their grounds and they're great for walking dogs. They're great for taking photographs, just getting a bit of fresh air and time out, really. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's a, a good thing to, uh, to put across. Yeah. Um, I mean, moving on, um, what advice could you give to photographers and, and small businesses um, on sort of a day-to-day a -day business to keep themselves busy? Well, I, I think the first thing is, you know, it's really important to try and focus on moving forward and thinking about what you can do rather than thinking about what you can't do because you'll just spiral and spiral. Um, so it's a really good time to think about your business. We're kind of, I, I don't know about you, but I think we're pre-programmed to kind of keep going along in a particular way. Um, and what tends to happen if we get knocked off kilter, 
we try to get back into normality. We want to go back to our normal routine. And maybe we need to think about whether that is actually where we want to be longer term. So, um, you know, think about your business and decide what it is you want to do. So, you know, if you find that you've kind of, you, you've wound up in one particular area of photography, the sort of thing, this isn't, how did I get here? This isn't actually what I really, really want to do. I want to do black and white weddings. I don't want to shoot all of these other events. You know, I don't want to be doing headshots or I don't want to be doing kids parties. I want to shoot black and white weddings. So focus your efforts into working out how you can get your business in the area that you want to be. And whilst, you know, you're probably not going to book a huge number of weddings right now, through sort of doing some planning and you know we, we're always talking about not having enough time to plan and think through well now we've got that time to plan yeah so I think about things like that and also you know if you're finding yourself working ridiculous hours and huge numbers of days then you know up, up until now then maybe it's a time to look and analyze your business and sort of think where is the money coming from and how do i maximize that area rather than um you know doing all this other stuff I mean, that, that's, Sorry. That, that is a really great point to put across. Um, so a couple of the other um, little webinars that we're going to be doing tomorrow is actually with an SEO company. Uh, and they're going to help us out with some uh, little tasks you can do while these times are quiet. That will help your uh, business. And we've also got an accountant that we're going to be talking with as well. Really good. Um, so instead of leaving all your accounts until year end, then... <laughs> Why not, you know, jump in yeah. and do some uh, some now? Yeah, that's um, really thinking. Yeah. Even even myself, it's made me look at my own business, and I am a little bit lucky because I do the headshots as well, and it hasn't affected the headshots to do because they're a a person, a single person coming in to have their headshot done. That's mm -hmm. kind of still sort of flowing. Yeah. So maybe I'm going to concentrate a bit yeah. on that that's for the next. Good. Good point. And I, I was thinking about this as well, you know, thinking about your business, if it is headshots, but it's slipping because people don't want to come to your premises or they don't want you going to theirs, can you take it outside? You know, could you go somewhere? Um, could you find a, a local environment, you know, local park, uh, you know, somewhere, Dinton Pastures in Reading or, you know, somewhere local where you could go and you could take photographs and you can stay three metres away from someone. <laughs> um, you know, and actually you can turn it into a more of a fun thing as well. Um, another thing I would say is if clients ring and they're talking cancellation, keep dropping the word postponing yeah, because, yeah. you know, try and get them to postpone. It could mean that you have a really, really busy September or a frantic November, but great. You know, you can have a quiet March and April, um, but talk about postponement. And because I think that's a much more positive message. It gets people sort of anticipating the event. So they've got something to look forward to. You've got something to plan and you can, um, you know, you can keep in touch with them and you might be able to send them little, little nuggets of information like, you know, oh, I, 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 what do you think of these shots? Or what do you think this location could be fantastic for, for what you want? Um, How about you bring your dog along that day? We could get some shots of him while you're there, you know, all this sort of stuff just to keep the dialogue going, building up this sort of, positive and exciting event that they've got coming up when it yeah. finally comes you know they have a great time and they want to order more prints or they want to order albums yeah and, and you know i mean that probably heads on to this uh, this last question for you on uh, you know how can we turn this uh, into being a productive um, uh, how to turn this into being productive um instead of just sitting at home watching the tv um and how do we keep ourselves motivated well you know, one of the things that I've done is I've actually sent out an email to all my wedding clients that have postponed their weddings until September and November that didn't have an engagement shoot. And I've been like, hey, guys, you know, how about let's do an engagement shoot? Yeah, uh, it gives us a really good time to connect. We're out in the open. So that that's what I've done. I sent that out. Uh, yeah. I have had two couples respond saying brilliant idea and we're, we're just fiddling around with dates. Yeah. Um, I have noticed that my headshots have actually gone slightly up in the amount that I'm doing. Oh, and right. this is because of bigger companies uh, telling all their staff to work from home. And when they've done an inquiry and they've gone, hey, you know what, I, I haven't got time at the moment. They're now coming back to me and saying, are you able to do this? Are we allowed to? And I was like, yeah, come yeah. along and oh, we'll, uh, we'll get that done. That's really good. And of course, you know, when you're doing the engagement shoots, you've probably got a little bit more time. 
So, you know, I, I can't remember what your, your normal time slot is for an engagement shoot, but you can probably afford to give them a bit more time and, you know, make it the most creative shoot that you've done. Really sort of think, well, I've often thought about doing this, but let's go for it. Let's do that. Let's try that different lens. Let's use those lights and make it the best one you've ever done. So that A, they'll be more enthusiastic about buying the prints or whatever. B, they're going to show all their friends because they've got these amazing shots and they'll get, you know, you'll get more bookings. And C, you've got more marketing material. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? I, at the end of the day, you don't even need to charge this engagement. You, if you're sitting at home, if you've got nothing to do, send the email out and say, you know, offer a free engagement shoot to a handful of couples. Um, and then when you create the gallery and put the images on there, say if they want any of the images, then they, they have to purchase them to download them, um, they have to purchase prints. So it, it creates a little bit of revenue for you like that. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. I mean, I'm always a bit cautious about saying do things for free because obviously that can have repercussions, but you can certainly make deals. You know, you can yeah. say to people, okay, what well, you can have, you know, 45 quid or 50 quid, yeah. you get this. And maybe they just get three digital prints or something like that. Sorry, yeah. three digital images. But then of course, you've got the upsell opportunity that, you know, it's, it's, it's enticing, it's 45 quid. They've got a bit yeah. of, you know, they've got a little bit of money. And but if people- How it really suits your business, really? Yeah, and, and let's face it, they're probably in the same situation where they're crawling the walls with nothing to do at yeah. home as well. So uh, an excuse to just get out and do something, they're, they're gonna be yeah. uh, well up for- uh, Yeah, you know, a nice day out basically. Yeah, no, that's, that's brilliant. I, I think um, uh, some good answers and hopefully some uh, good information to help people fill in their days and move forward. I'm going to uh, move over to Katie now and so we can have a quick chat um, before I open it up to all of us and then we can, um, you know, crack open the bottles and have a little party. <laughs> yes. So let me just, um, I'm going to mute you, Angela, and I'm going to unmute Katie and I'm going to spotlight you so there you go you're um, Hang uh, on. you're on it's your it's your turn it's all eyes to you you say that Rob with a bit of like intrepidation it's like oh my <laughs> god I'm actually handing over to Katie this could <laughs> all go so south well no <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit scared you may turn it into a party so <laughs> why not uh yeah i mean i think you were really spot on in the fact that everybody feels just um a bit beaten up now a bit beaten up by the news a bit that it's just been wave after wave after wave of uh, of news which is really hard to get your head around yeah you know it's not like something um it isn't it, it's it's very difficult for people to process on a day-to-day -day, uh, schedule, you know. Yeah. And I mean, let's face it, you know, when, uh, when we see these pictures of empty shelves in supermarket, it's someone just taking a picture of one shelf. You know, Absolutely. when you walk around the rest of the supermarket, there is loads of food there, you know, there's, there's no problems. Yeah. Um, so I think we just need to be very mindful of um, the things we look at and uh, what we yeah. see. And being mindful of that narrative that we tell other people and we tell ourselves, because before you know it, you can you can sort of spiral down a bit of a rabbit hole of, well, you know, where's all the bookings? Where's the business going to come from? How are we going to do it? You know, there is, it becomes another layer after a layer after layer of of really hard questions to answer, and I think just breaking those down to manageable bits that you can actually get through one day having achieved something small yeah. it might be something massive you might have achieved something brilliantly but to to kind of take the pressure off and just go do you know what everyone is in the same situation everyone's yeah. in the same boat there's not a time where you think oh that photographer or that business is doing better because they're doing this and this and this it's actually the biggest leveler yeah and you know creators entrepreneurs photographers videographers drone whatever it is we are all wired to want to create yeah so to try and tell us that we can't do something basically is is telling us we can't do something in the way that you used to do it yeah so 
push a different door, try can, a different tactic. We can diversitize ourselves, you know, and um, and you never know, we could end up learning something totally new and it brings in a total different revenue to us. Completely. But if you, um, if you listen to that start to that narrative where it is doom and gloom, I'm not taking aside anything that, that things aren't bad because they are bad. Yeah. But sometimes it's like, okay, we're going to see things with just a different pair of glasses on today. Yeah. And that positivity, that confidence, that motivation may only last for a bit of, you know, an hour. Yeah. But within that hour, try and move from where you are now to being somewhere else. Yeah. And that yeah. could be, you know, looking at your website and going, actually, is this really, you know, is this really easy for people to understand what it is that I do? Yeah. How can that, what is my, what is my story? I mean, there's, there's always a positive that comes out of a, a negative. So, so I'm going to throw in some questions um, to you, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get going. So, uh, so obviously, um, uh, you must have seen a decrease in business uh, in your line of work, just like my myself as well. Um, how are you keeping positive? What advice could you give to uh, to others as well? Um, I think it's for the circumstances that we're in now is uh, to just to have a bit of a, uh, to be able to just sit down and go, okay, what can I control right now? Yeah. Because at the moment, everything else can feel like you're so out of control. You know, the news, when you hear it, it's so-and-so is happening. It's happening there. That's going to have an effect on here. And because they're such big, big things to tackle you can suddenly feel really out of control really quickly yeah. so it's about dialing that down and deciding okay I can control these five things this week or today yeah. and writing those down and approaching it in a, a, a balanced way as you can yeah. because I think where we are now or where I am today on Thursday compared to where I was mindset wise on Monday is completely different yeah, on I Monday I was so distracted I literally was bouncing from one news stream to another news stream to another news stream it didn't stop the fact that I'd still got stuff to do all it did was totally take me off my list of things to do it completely yeah, and I think the news can get you sidetracked, you know, and you get in like this addictive uh, place where you're forever going on checking the news and updates, and the the true update only uh, gets updated once a day. So if yeah. you look at it once in a morning, yeah. and then that's it, you know. And kill you know kill your news apps on your phone. Yeah. Just just you know remove those and. Uh, like you, I, listen, I look at the news first thing in the morning and then probably, you know, after the evening's um, announcement. And then that's enough. You know, there's nothing else that I can do about that. Yeah. So take control of the stuff that you can control, I think is really important. And um, in terms of confidence and motivation, I think that what is important through, while the whole industry and the whole world goes through all of this is to not suddenly mute your business yeah. is to, to just to not be out there directly selling at the moment. Cause I think everybody would just, that, that really jars against what's happening, but have this storytelling, tell people about what you're doing on a day to day, you know, tell people, Oh, I'm actually looking at my website today because I've got a bit of downtime or oh, I'm trying, trying to have a go at my first podcast. What software would you recommend? Keep that engagement, keep that conversation going with, because people want to know. Yeah. And if you suddenly disappear when all of this does finish and it will do, you know, it will come to oh, an end. Oh, I don't know when, sure. yeah you're there you've always been there and people have known about you so you're then not having to backpedal and find those customers that you worked so hard at yeah you've, you they've come along with you on that whole kind of master chef journey yeah and so and you know so that answers sort of like that next question that how to motivate ourselves i mean you know i i've been saying to some of the people i've been talking to um 
you know, concentrate on your website, refresh it, uh, go through your archive of images, change yeah. your images on your website because you've got that time to really go through it and get the best of the best and pop them on there. Yeah. Write some blogs. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're on old weddings. Doesn't matter. Just, yeah, just, just write them. Yeah. And when you post them, copy that bride and groom in, you know, let the bride and groom be like, oh my God, you've wrote a blog, you know, and go yeah. to your, your website. It keeps your website active, so it keeps yeah. you active. Exactly. Um, so yeah, it's, you um, know, it yeah, is about... You've got, you've got a whole database of customers that you've engaged with that you've that you've had that you've you know fought so hard to get their business to get their trust to have that reopen that conversation you know how are you how are things you know are you just there is nothing wrong with sending out an email Mail, mailchimp to previous customers just to say hey thinking of you all at this time you know wishing you well yeah it, it even happened to me i mean look at um, tps yeah as soon as that happened, I sent out a message to some of the, the people that I work quite closely with, and yeah. some of them were schools as well. And um, they come back to me, you know, love to help you out, Rob. We've got these events if you'd like to cover them. And before you knew it, I had my, uh, my days filled back up with work. So, yeah. It's, and it's about being um, active. You know, we've never, fingers crossed, we'll never go through this again. Yeah. And everyone in business is or has up until this point been saying, I'm time starved. I don't have time to do this. Yeah. You've now got the biggest opportunity you can have to realign your business, to re, you know, to reboost it, to do, look at it with completely fresh eyes yeah. and redirect it. But well, it, you know, so it, take it, those advantages. I mean, in theory, you've uh, you could even go so far to say that you've got two months to reinvent yourself. If if, if you was if you felt your business was stuck in a rut and yeah. you were sick of doing weddings and yeah. you wanted to do headshots instead, uh, but you didn't have the time to research it, then this is the time where yeah. you, you've you've got the opportunity to. If you want to change directions, then you can. And do it's also you know the time to experiment. If you've yeah. never done any. Um, podcasts or if you've never done any stuff to camera before yeah. then while nobody is is kind of concentrating on you and your business that's the time to experiment you like know. we're like we're doing now and it's a case Actually. of don't touch any buttons because it's all working and fine <laughs> Um, but it is those opportunities to experiment, to try, to see something new, but also to um, to acknowledge that this is a really, really freaky, weird time. It is. It and is. if you're not feeling motivated all the time, that's oh, that's perfectly normal and to be expected. So it manage your own expectations. Yeah. Because I think this is all about when this finishes coming out with the confidence to know that your business is where you want it to be. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I've got a question for you and I, I'm, I was sort of quite excited to ask this uh, you as well. Um, as a, a family man myself, um, <laughs> so you're a mum, you've got two, uh, two children, you've got a husband. Yeah. Um, it just uh, got announced on Friday that the, the schools are going to close and uh, they're going to close until, um, you know, until the seeable future. They, they've not put a date on it. Um, what will your be approach uh, to work and what advice could you give to uh, other families, maybe even single parents yeah. that need schools for their childcare because they depend on it? Uh, and they also run their own business as well. What what advice could you give to them? Well, um, I think that this is a time where you can't continue doing the same stuff. You can't because it's you can't be in two worlds. You can't be a little bit pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. Yeah. So when your kids are with you, then. You, the, and again, it all, all depend on the, the age of the children and kind of that, you know. Um, I think it is about managing their expectations, your expectations, 
and having that conversation with them, they will know that you either run your own business or work from home or whatever. So they know that kids are smart. Yeah. And I think if you have to say, look, do you know what? From nine till 11 is going to be Netflix time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be iPad time or it's, you know, now is not the time to wig out too much about technology. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, quite strict with my kids about t time on a tablet. But uh, the reality is that this is an indefinite amount of time that they're going to be off. So it's what's going to, you know, what's going to be possible. I'm, I mean, I know, I know my, uh, my laddies, um, I, I feel my heart goes out to him. I, I feel sorry for him because it's his birthday on Saturday. Yeah. He was looking forward to, uh, so it's his end of years in year 11, and it was their um, uh, their wrong. dance, their yeah. end of year ball as well. And it's all been cancelled, so he's yeah. uh, he's really upset about that. Yeah. And he's and that's and that's he's really uncertain good. as well. You know, obviously his friends, are, yeah. you know, what happens? I think this is a really good point you make, because this isn't just about you in your business and how are you going to manage? Are you me or, you know, the people that are out there running businesses, we have to be, or I think it's the right thing to be mindful of yeah. these kids because we're adults, you know, we are understanding of what's going on in the world has far more layers and we understand it in a much greater way. Yeah. The kids, they're like, suddenly, uh, what do you mean? You know, Sophia, she's not going to be in a play that she was really, really excited about. Elliot's birthday is in a couple of weeks. And now, you know, he's, so he's not going to have a party. There are all these things that they're looking forward to in their world yeah. that are normal and structured and kids love structure. Yeah. And suddenly they're like, what do you mean we're going to be at home? You know? Yeah. Oh, okay. So they're confused. And I think the first priority is, is about managing their welfare and their kind of headset around it. And, and just kind of vocalizing it. And I think, I mean, this is, this is going to be my approach and whether it works for others is going to be up to others. But for the first week, it's just going to be like, this is, we're going to, essentially pretend yeah. that we're going to take this as a week's holiday yeah. because there's just too many elements to to get on top of straight away you yeah. know and then we can look at how we put more structure into the days yeah. i work uh, so i'm um i'm much better in the morning you know i can get up you know 5 30 and start working i have no problems with that at all but my husband is a night owl so he you know can work until like 12 one o'clock whatever no problem so we we have we work at different times and i think as get as well as like looking at the tag team of how that can work yeah managing people's expectations so managing your customers expectations and the only way you can do that is to be really upfront and honest with them. So if a job that was going to take normally two weeks, you may want to add another week and just to explain they, you know, people understand that we are living in really unusual circumstances yeah. and people buy from people. So, yeah, and, and, and you know, that, that sort of goes on where, you know, if you have got consultations booked in and you work from home, don't reschedule them, you know, just yeah. because the kids are going to be off and yeah. they're going to be in the front room, you know, yeah. that, the couple coming around, they know that, they understand that. So yeah. still do the consultations, um, you know, don't let your business stop just no. because of that. And, you know, there are many times and there will be many times that I want to lock the children into a cupboard. Yeah. But if you've already got your customers coming, now's not the time to do that this is real life yeah. you know and i think it's good for kids to see that working process to see you know oh that's that's dad he's a photographer this is his part of the business this is dad my dad yeah you know it's um and it is just about having conversations with the kids first structuring it down because the reality is that i don't think anybody's going to be able to hit the ground running on monday morning saying we're going to be homeschooled yeah well uh, you know my son's got a, sh uh, a shock because 
I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm thinking the, the fence needs painting. You know, I, I need the grass mode. I, I, you know, I need the, the back. <laughs> I've got so many jobs lined up. Based on how many people were at B&Q last week, it's just all these houses are going to be sparked. Even, even Lisa said to me um, the other day, should we go to B&Q and buy some paint just in case, because we could always just paint the kitchen? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. there, there will be no, no uh, stone unturned, no pair of hands that will not be going to work in some form or another. I know. It is, you know, I, I understand the reality that there suddenly could be two people who are married or live together or whatever and are now having to work at home together yeah. for the first time. Yeah. You know, that's, that's this is, this not... Is Either. It's going to be a, a test of patience and a test of relationships, you know. It'll either be a baby boom or be a spike. Which it'll go one or the other. If you're a baby photographer, you are quids in, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. I would be lucky at who to target in nine months' time. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Well, you know, uh, brilliant answering those questions you know i've really ha uh, enjoyed having you uh, on here i'm going to just unmute everyone and open you um, all up if i can figure this out unmute all and we'll go to a gallery of view so we're all there together so everyone should be in one room so now it is a party because we're all now together we hello <laughs> um i'm just going to um spotlight um spotlight myself and put us into the room there we go so uh again i really appreciate you uh, coming on board and answering those questions because anything we can do to help anyone out that's uh, struggling then that's all we're after doing uh, like i say tomorrow we've got seo and then on saturday we've got bookkeeping um on uh, tomorrow afternoon, I've um, got a talk with Andrew from Fundy, and we're going to talk about uh, how he got through uh, sort of 9/11 and his uh, yeah. troubles as well. So that should be good. Um, so loads planned. Have you got anything that you would like to to add? Um, uh, I would say I, I, I got in first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn to your communities. And that may be online communities, not necessarily next door, because actually there's a lot of positive positivity, you know, positive vibes going on through there. Um, earlier today on She Clicks, we had a virtual coffee morning and, you know, everyone was just chatting about stuff, drinking coffee. We use Zoom um, and it's just it's a really good way of a getting contact with people. Uh, spreading a little bit of happiness i guess but also it just makes you feel a bit better in connection with people and you never know where an idea might come from mm. yeah definitely I, and even you know facetime um facetime people have some chats if you can't get out of the house then uh, you know just do a video call to them yeah uh, nowadays we can sit up video calls for mm. hours and on the end and uh, have a chat if you're two photography buddies and you you live on the uh, other side of the world then um, get your cameras out do a video call and you can do a, a virtual shoot um, as well so help each other out maybe if you want to learn flash and uh, yeah do something like yeah. that so there, there's loads of ideas out there to keep us busy I think like we've been saying all the way through be mindful it's uh, positivity moving forward don't let this get you down it will pass um yeah. the media does make it a little bit more blown out of proportion than what it is uh, i won't lie though you know it's it is worrying what's going on but it will certainly pass i think we're at the the peak of it now um and it won't be too long before everything starts to go back to normality uh, and it's important when it goes back to normality that our businesses um run as normal you know, like nothing's happened. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's our livelihood and we want to come out of this stronger than ever. So let's get our businesses ready for when we are pulling out of it um, and people are searching for photographers and wedding photographers. Uh, our website's looking better than ever. And maybe we've taught ourselves new tricks how to do like three people in one room on Zoom. So... <laughs> Don't use that quote on your website. I, <laughs> I think so, we're to you, Rob. Sorry. 
been great talking to you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you, you too. Listen, and uh, yeah, and thanks, thanks a lot for coming along, um, Kate. Um, it was uh, brilliant having you along. So I am actually going to end it there. Um, again, appreciate you all coming along. I will be in touch very soon and we'll get this up and live for everyone to see. So uh, I'm going to bid you all goodbye and thanks a lot. Bye. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Wash your hands. <laughs>